Hello there everyone and welcome to UXW Bill Knows Nothing About Installing Ductwork. Today on UXW Bill Knows Nothing About Installing Ductwork, we're going to demonstrate that UXW Bill does in fact know nothing about how to properly install ductwork. We're here in the computer mess room today with Mr. UXW Bill, who's also filling in as the announcer talk about a little bit of theory that I've been working with. I'll quit talking about myself in the third person. For as long as we've lived in this house, this basement has always been cold, and undoubtedly that is due in part, at least, to the drafty nature of the windows down here. But there's also a paucity of heating vents that allow any warmed or otherwise conditioned air to get anywhere down here. And being as I am resolutely tired of it being like negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit down here all the time, I have decided to take matters into my own hands here in the computer mess room and solve this problem by, you guessed it, installing ductwork and the ceiling diffuser, a three-cone diffuser that I got cheap off eBay. You can probably see why. It wasn't supposed to arrive broken, but it did. That's a spot weld, and I don't see any easy way to fix it. I'm getting way off the subject going to install that diffuser, but in order to do that I also need to install some ductwork leading up to it. Now I don't think this is going to be tremendously difficult. I've got some doodads and geegaws and things like that. And along the way in my HVAC training, I did take an installation class, but I took it with the head of the department rather than the instructor that I took most of the classes with. That was clearly a mistake. I should have taken it with the instructor that I took most of the classes with, and I might go take it again because in the version of the class that I took, although we did things like basic ductwork assembly, cutting and threading black pipes, sweating pipes together, all that sorts of stuff, uh, using adhesive to put PVC pipe together, we never actually took down a furnace and put it back together again to demonstrate those things in real life nor did we make a complex form out of black pipe like the other instructor did. So in the future I might well take that class again just because I didn't get much out of it the first time. On our way into looking at things further here we'll move the scanning electron handycam down a little bit. You can see I've already made my ceiling modifications. These were originally 4x2 ceiling tiles. I've subdivided this one after taking the original tile down. We have the diffuser here. We have a T-bar piece that I bought at the home desk spot, and then we have a tile that I actually scammed from the maintenance department at my workplace. I realized one day that they had like thousands of them sitting in a warehouse somewhere, so I just asked the guy if I could have one, and he came through. So I got all these parts that I needed to do the visual aspects. Let's see what I needed to do the actual duct work and what I got there. All right, now here's the part where nothing says UXW Bill needs a copy of Manual J, like his sitting here and talking about ductwork as though he actually knew anything about planning for and installing it. I do know a little bit, probably just enough to be dangerous so far. Again, I say I didn't get a whole lot out of my installation class. But I do know enough to know that you need one of these things. This is a starting collar. You cut a hole in your plenum or the ductwork that you plan to tap into, and then you stick this in there and you splay out the little tabs on the end of it. Now initially this was all I had planned to put in, but then I realized, you know, maybe I'll have, excuse me, more airflow than I want. Maybe I need a way to adjust it up or down to limit the amount of air that can flow through there. And so I ended up getting one of these. This is a balancing damper. There's a little handle on the outside of it. And when you turn that handle, it operates a damper within this stubby piece of pipe. And that allows you, at least in theory, to balance your heating and air conditioning system so that all your rooms are at equal temperatures. Of course, I have never been in a house where such is actually the case. So I'm guessing this is something that most people never really manage to do successfully or just don't take the time to do. These two pieces will end up going together, something like that. I'll go ahead and use some self-tapping sheet metal screws or zip-ins just to ensure that these two don't blow apart. And then I may actually go ahead and try to seal it for air leaks with some metalized furnace tape. I'll probably do that before I put the screws in just so it'll have a slightly neater appearance, look a little more professional. Although I'm sure I'm going to be caned and probably quite rightfully so in the comments for 
every unprofessional aspect you see in this job. But oh well, you've got to start somewhere. You've got to learn it somehow. On the end of this, I could have done the whole thing in solid pipe, but I decided to use flexible duct just because I wanted to get some more experience with cutting it, preparing it, hanging it, all that sort of stuff. Maybe not the best way to go, but it's the way I'm going with this, so that's just how it's going to be. This is 6 inch circumference ductwork. It was the smallest size for which I could still find a sealing diffuser to be readily available. Now I probably could have gone with a different, uh, different size sealing diffuser and used smaller pipe and simply transitioned as necessary, but I didn't really see that as being a feasible thing to do just because I don't have a lot of room to work in that drop ceiling. So now that I've shown you most of the pieces I'm going to use from the diffuser to these two metal parts, the only thing you haven't seen is the flex duct, but you'll see it soon enough. It's time to go and cut a hole in the ductwork. And I have an amazing little tool for that too. I'm not going to try to use it on camera, but you'll see it and I'll talk about it here in just a little bit thanks to the magic of video editing. Alright, so I could have made my entry into the ductwork using a set of tin snips, which I actually do have, although they're the ones you get at Harbor Freight, so they're probably not actually worth having. But why would I go to that much trouble when I have this almost totally awesome Malco HC1 hole cutter? One of my instructors told me of this, and we got to use one in the classroom. Suffice it to say, it is an amazing tool for making round holes in the ductwork, but unfortunately, since I didn't set it up in the classroom, I had to learn a hard lesson about it just now. This little adjustment right here is what sets your ductwork size, the hole that you're going to make. And unfortunately, if you really don't crank that bad boy down, and apparently I didn't crank it down enough the first time, it'll creep on you, and your hole ends up getting bigger. And you might not realize that until after the fact, which I'm not too proud to admit I didn't, but it's nothing that a little sheet metal or some furnace tape can't ultimately fix. It's just not very pretty is all. Speaking of holes, let's go see what I did, thanks to the wonders of video editing and the scanning Electron Handycam. And, of course, how could I possibly forget the finest flashlight that Dollar Tree had to offer? Now, back when this house was built over a hundred years ago, it was initially heated with coal using a gravity furnace. And some years ago, we discovered where all those clinkers were dumped back when that was the choice of heating for this house. Sometime probably in the late 1940s or early 1950s, this house was changed over to oil forced air heat and then the oil furnace itself was later converted to burn natural gas. And then, of course, we replaced that furnace in the mid-1990s with the comfort shaker that has been serving for about the past 25-odd years or so. Now, oil heat certainly works very well, but from what I know of it, and people do certainly have it here in Illinois, though it's not as popular as it is, say, on the East Coast, where a great many homes are older and some even still have it, and I think you can still buy an oil burning furnace to this day. Actually, I know you can because the key keeper's place of work was heated with one and it failed and they replaced it with a brand new one. But I'm getting way off the subject again. Oil heat works well, but it's a very dirty source of heat. It tends to get things sooty, and when we started peeling back the many years of wallpaper in this house, we discovered some of that soot near the edges of the ceiling and similar places. So I've been curious for a long time about the overall condition of the ductwork in this house. I don't know where that opening up there came from. I might have made some mistakes, but I didn't make one quite that bad. And I'm surprised to see that this ductwork is actually surprisingly clean. Now, sheet metal that's just been cut, of course, is razor sharp. So I'm probably going to get a nasty cut at this point in the job. We're going to poke the scanning electron handy cam down there and just see what it might be able to see. But at least what I can see from where I'm standing looks remarkably clean. So now that we've had that little exploration, we'll get the flashlight out of there before I leave it in there like a boss. And yes, in case you're wondering, I did do that when I was removing the intruder from the furnace fan blower wheel. I left one of my Harbor Freight puck lights in there. Thankfully, the blower did not end up sucking it up. So here is my starting collar going into place. And I'll just go ahead and fold all those tangs over to secure this and then I'll seal it up with some furnace tape to further improve its air tightness. Alright, it's time to go ahead and finish tightening up this cable tie. 
get that cinched down nice and tight. And then, just cut the end off of it just like that. All right, so you guys who do this for a living, probably been doing it for years, or at least had some better instruction in this sort of thing than I have, you're probably gasping in disbelief at all the horrifying things you've seen done throughout the course of this video, but I hope you'll cut me a break, and if corrections are called for, which I'm practically certain they are at this point, gentle ones are always welcomed. And yes, as I think I said previously, I have thought about going back and taking the installation class again from the other instructor. Oh, I'd rather not spend money twice on the same thing, but such it may be. I've gone ahead and tied down the inner bit of ductwork here, the inner portion of the flexible duct. I've cable tied it or zip tied it down to the inlet on this diffuser, which is right here. And now it's time to bring this insulated jacket down and do the same thing to it. Probably a little short on insulated jacket there. But oh well, this, like I say, this is my first time doing anything like this, and maybe I should have bought some junk pieces, assembled them, and done it that way first. Because <laughs> I've certainly learned a fair few things along the way. But I'll go ahead and get my gloves back on for dealing with that fiberglass insulation. And yes, I have been wearing them because I really don't want to itch like crazy in bed tonight or any other time for that matter. So I'll get my gloves back on, get that tied down, and put all the ceiling tiles back in place. And we'll have a run-up and just see how well it happens to work or if everything explodes. And I should just patch over the hole that I cut and throw all this mess in the landfill somewhere. If anybody's still watching at this point, it's time to give everything that I've done tonight a test. And in order to prepare for that, I've gone ahead and replaced most of the ceiling tiles, except for the one that I have to leave out in order to access the balancing damper. But let's see what happens here. I've gone ahead and opened up the thermostat control, and if I don't drop absolutely everything on the floor here, I'll request that the furnace blower turn on. Go ahead and submit my changes here. And we'll just see how long it takes for my request to wend its way across the public internet and through Honeywell's systems before the furnace fan finally kicks on. Sometimes it takes a minute or so. And then we'll just see if any air manages to come out of this crazy thing. I know, the excitement is palpable. There we go. There's our blower. No air coming out right now, or very little anyway. Let's go ahead and just open this up and see what we get. And there's definitely air flowing through there now. A little bit more coming out this way. Headphone users, you may want to turn your volume down. Yeah, it seems to work. Which is probably something of a miracle, given that I was doing this. There's that lovely broken thing again. A little spot weld that came off of there. But now, in order to find out whether or not this thing makes a difference, I'll have to do a bit more long-term of a test. So I've set up a thermometer in here in the form of a disused thermostat. You can see it's a rather chilly 62 degrees in here. I will certainly move that much further away from the diffuser so that its readings are not unduly influenced by it. And we'll just see. I'll report down in the video description rather than shooting a whole other video or keeping this one from your eyes for that long a period of time as to whether or not it made a difference and if so, what kind of difference it happened to make. I certainly do expect there to be some improvement. So as always, I thank you for watching. I'm always interested in hearing what you have to say with your constructive commentary down in the comments area. And as always, gentle corrections are certainly welcome. So let's go ahead and just turn the furnace blower off there. And we'll just see how long it takes for that to actually happen. There is, of course, a delay on the control board, so it doesn't shut off instantly. There it went.